our time here. So welcome everyone. My name is Julie Chapman. I'm the Director of Recruitment Partnerships for the Undergraduate Admissions Office. And we're super pleased you can join us for our virtual mechanical engineering information session. Um, our session should take us just about 45 minutes or so, about half of that time for a presentation, and then lots of time for you to ask questions through our Q&A option. So please do that, because um, that will definitely help as you learn a little bit more about WPI. So just a reminder, this is a Zoom format. Um, we can't see or hear our attendees. Of course, you can see us. This is also being recorded. So we're gonna have this on our WPI Admissions YouTube channel within the next few business days as well. So if there's something that you need to revisit or you wanna show off to somebody else, please feel free to use that particular link. Um, as soon as I turn this over to our, our guest panelists and speakers, I'm gonna turn off my video, but I will help to monitor that Q&A section and make sure that we answer any questions that you have. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to someone, I'm not sure who's going to do it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you so, so much, much, Julie. <laughs> um, and hello, everyone. We, we again, can't see you. Uh, so I, I know you're there, though. I can see the number at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm Professor Sarah Woden Schwartz, and I'm here with Professor John Sullivan and three students who are their seniors, and they're currently working with, uh, with me as their advisor on their MQP, which you'll get to learn all about. But before, uh, before that, we want to talk to you a little bit about the mechanical engineering department. And so I'm going to share my screen and we'll go through just some information about the department. And then we'll have lots of time for Q&A for both myself, Professor Sullivan, and all three of our students. So feel free to put questions in the Q&A um, as we go. And all of us will work on responding to those while we're, while we're going and afterwards as well. So let me share my screen. Let me share the correct screen. I think I got the right one. So many screen options at once. Um, but welcome to, to the mechanical engineering discussion here today. Uh, again, you have myself and Professor Sullivan uh, is, uh, from the mechanical engineering department and our department head, uh, Professor Yugubi, uh, is not with us today, but um, fantastic department head. There we go. So you might be thinking to yourself, why mechanical engineering? We do love to say that the world depends on me or you, if you will, but ME for me. Um, and it's a really exciting field. It's number seven among best technology jobs and it has a very low unemployment rate. So those are some reasons why you might want to be thinking about mechanical engineering. But maybe more important than that would be your passion for mechanical things in the world around you. So here are some pictures of some of the things mechanical engineers work on. We have different types of engines, which are, are relatively common. There is alternative energy systems. Uh, down here, you can see some wind turbines, all different kinds of neat mechanics. And if you're someone who likes to use your hands and do mechanical things, then mechanical engineering very well might be for you. Mechanical engineering, this is, this is a, a busy picture here. The, the important thing to notice is that mechanical engineering is that, is that top line for the entire time on this chart. Um, it's, it's been the, the top engineering major for many, many years um, and going strong. You can see RBE here is very much climbing through the ranks. And RBE, we have a lot of students who double major, in fact, with mechanical and RBE. There's a lot of overlap between those two. Um, but it's a very popular major. It's a very large major because we're, we cover such a large different diversity of, of fields in mechanical. And so once you even thought about WPI or um, well, about mechanical engineering, maybe you're thinking why WPI? Um, WPI is one of the, the best and most interesting colleges and universities in the country. And WPI has well, they we're in the top 1% of starting salaries, the fourth highest starting median salary, and we've had consecutive five years of very high ranking. So our students go on to do really well in the job market, and we prepare you very well for those jobs. We also have a very high retention rate. We, we love having our students come to WPI, and we love having them stay at WPI. 
And so here, this this only goes to 2017, just because we haven't looked at the numbers in, since then, it hasn't changed, but we have a very high retention rate from our first year class retained to our second year class. So if you come to WPI, we're here to support you and help make sure that you make it through that beginning part of your undergraduate education, which can be a really scary and big transition time. So mechanical engineering at WPI, we love theory and practice here at WPI. And so WPI mechanical engineers, we combine those theory and practice pieces to design new systems, new products, new processes, um, and new tools for with teams of, of engineers, scientists, artists. We have all different types of interdisciplinary teams that work together in this project-based education. You have many large projects that you can complete while you're on campus. It's not just your coursework. You're doing these big projects. You also have projects in your courses. So a big chance to be doing a lot of project-based learning, which has been shown to be really great to help our students when they're going into the working world. Just in terms of the degrees that we offer in the mechanical engineering department, in, in the, as an undergrad degree, we offer mechanical engineering. But within our department for master's and PhD, we offer mechanical engineering, material science and engineering, and manufacturing engineering. So there's a pretty broad range that we offer. And this means that we have faculty to support all of these different areas. I'm gonna pass it over to Professor Sullivan to talk a little bit about the, the breakdown of the types of courses that you're gonna take while in the mechanical engineering department here at WPI. You know, one of the, the best things about WPI is the degree of freedom that you have. Most engineering schools that you might go to during your four years, you might have a few electives. However, at WPI, 50% of all the engineering courses that you have are electives. That is, what do you want to do? We figure that you need to go ahead and satisfy a mechanical stim. So with that, we have three courses, statics, stress, and dynamics. You know, think about statics as just the three-legged stool. You're sitting on it. The statics will tell you what each of the legs are sustaining for a load. You go into the stress. Now one leg is made out of wood. The other one is titanium, and the other one is styrofoam tells you how much each of them will deform on that. And then you go into your dynamics. And so the styrofoam, maybe you exceeded a limit and it might buckle and then it'll tell you how long it's gonna take you to hit the ground. We also have an energy stem. With that energy stem, we want you to have a full understanding of thermal dynamics as well as fluid flow and heat transfer. And then our third pillar that we think that you should have deals with a course in material science, a course in electrical engineering, and a course in experimentation. But once you have those courses, then a whole series of other courses are available to you, however you might like to do it. If you're really interested in the mechanical side, you know, there are kinematics design of machines, advanced engineering design. If you're into energy, there's renewable energy, thermal fluid sciences, there's you know, design of thermal mechanical systems. And in the materials, you might decide on automotive materials, ceramics, you know, biomedical materials, the list goes on. But all these other courses are just ones that you would take uh, that are of your interest. We also offer a combined bachelor's master's degree type option that you can do. And with that, we allow you to take 12 graduate credits that are combined with your undergraduate degree so that you can count them toward your undergraduate degree, but also count them toward your master's degree, which really gives you a very, very you know, legs up on or, or start on getting started with your master's degree. So if you do look at our degree requirements that you have, they're a little bit busy and I, I don't expect you to really understand this slide much, but you have 
four units that might be required that you would do for the non-technical activities, such as your humanities, your interactive qualifying project, uh, social sciences and material. Then you also have a mathematics area and science area that you need to satisfy. And then finally, you've got an area which is the largest area, but the area for engineering courses. And then we list those out. But once again, the required courses are only 50% of what you will need in order to get your degree done. WPI was really founded on this project-based engineering philosophy. And we, we do that. We give you projects every single year that you are here. And to show you some of them, we have in the upper left, somebody wanted to do a dragonfly type robot, you know, which is a kind of a cool item, but how do you do it? You know, if you did see, uh, Oh, who is J James Cameron's, uh, not Android. Uh, Avatar. I'm sorry? Avatar, yeah. Avatar, yes. If you wanted to do that. Here you've got, you know, somebody that was working on a hand device that would go ahead and operate a much larger machine. Uh, you know, in the lower left, you know, we've got a micro aerial vehicle in the lower right. We've got inspection being done on, you know, mechanical parts. And, you know, as, as I'm showing all these mechanical parts, you know, that's not all that mechanical engineering is. You know, the bottom center one is what happens for thermal energy. So here we've got a person who might be a paraplegic or a quadriplegic. And unfortunately, people in that type of situation experience bed sores much too often. And the reason being is that they don't have the ability to scooch around in their seat. So this pillow is actually a combined water ammonia vapor or water ammonia mixture. But the students designed it to change phase going from liquid to vapor at body basal temperature. So therefore, the the people sit in the wheelchair, the heat boils this vapor or, or this uh, ammonia uh, water mixture and vaporizes it. The vapor, hard to see, but it runs up the red tubes in the back where it's behind the wheelchair at room temperature, which is below the vapor temperature phase change and therefore it condenses back. So therefore you have something which provides body cooling, quite a bit of cooling, no moving parts, no batteries, you just sit on it and it cools it down and it helps to mitigate what you might have for a lot of bed sores. The students built it, it does work, you know, for safety sakes, you know, we didn't have them have a nice soft gel cushion. They actually sat on a stainless steel plate. So it wasn't as soft as what you might like, but it really worked and it was a fun demonstration of it. But these are the projects that you have. We've got a, a great amount of facilities, whether you are interested in doing subtractive manufacturing, holography as we have on the right side or I'm going to the next slide, we've got additive manufacturing for doing things. So we've got the whole thing and, and it, it, they're all available to you. If you're interested in doing research, we do have an awful lot. Our department head is the short one in the upper left. And, you know, he's got his, you know, uh, graduate research team that are going on to the zero G or the vomit comet. And, you know, there they are. And as you can see in the upper right figure, they're weightless. They're having a pretty good time. 
you know, Jamal, our department head, is the one who's just looking down, hanging on to stuff. But uh, alas, look who we have in the lower left corner. There we've got, you know, Professor Woden Schwartz, you know, flipping around, having a good time. You know, she's not doing any of her duties. She's just having a good time. So there you are. But you have this as an ability. And in fact, up to 20 incoming ME majors will be supported throughout the year uh, in order to work in one of our research labs. It's available. You do have to apply, but it is available. It's a great opportunity. We have a great deal of manufacturing. Students do all the work themselves for what they do. They can get incredibly fine machining out for doing subtractive manufacturing. You know, here is a, a Sterling engine that uh, students were uh, building. So they would go ahead and they'd build everything, shall we say, to the left of the Pyrex uh, cylinder that you see. We've got phenomenal machining capability that is freely available to use. And we broadcast our own course in the year 1800. But you know, when you look at it, you have this ability to go ahead and do it. And that's freely available to you. You know, th this student was trying to improve a bicycle design. It doesn't have to be a project associated with your school project. Most of them are, but it's not required. You can you know, work on your own projects. We still provide all the resources. So you know, we, we hope that you liked this and, uh, and we're open for questions. We'll gladly answer any questions. And we've also got three great students, you know, Alyssa, Kelly, and Mitch that are here that can help answer any questions. And we'll let Professor Woden Schwartz bounce a question off to. Yeah, or, excellent. You pick which one. <laughs> so, so we have three great students here today. All three of them are working on an MQP uh, with, with me right now as the advisor. And it was their own project idea. They came up with it. They proposed it to, to me. Um, so I think, how about we go over to Kelly? Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to work on this project? Uh, yeah, so our project is about reducing microplastics in freshwater environments. So um, obviously using a mechanical engineering approach, you know, we're not gonna be using uh, too much in the way of robotics. We're not gonna be using too much in the way of uh, you know, developing our own chemicals or anything. Um, but what this is based off of was Alyssa and I and two others who are not part of our MQP team uh, were in the same group for IQP, so the junior year project, which is a little bit more uh, social sciences based. Um, and that one was also about uh, finding out how many plastics there were in Worcester waterways um, and we just had a really great time with it. Uh, we discovered um, that it was something that we were both really passionate about and we wanted to do more with it. You know, I was talking with somebody one night, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really disappointed that I don't get to keep doing this research and keep doing IQP. And, you know, that person said, well, yes, you can make your own MQP about it. And so we did. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. That's wonderful. Um, how about let's pass it on to Alyssa because she's making great eye contact with me right now. You can tell through Zoom. <laughs> um, so what about, um, what are some classes you think that you've taken at WPI that really helped prepare you to work on your MQP project? Um, specific classes, probably a lot of like the basic uh, thermodynamics, heat transfer, um, kinematics, especially right now with MQP, we're going to be designing a mechanical engineering system uh, to filter out or reduce microplastics. So 
a lot of that will come in handy when we're looking to make a certain device. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Alyssa. All right, Mitch, heading down to you. <laughs> and again, for the for those who are here in the panel, if you are not sorry, not on the panel, those of you who are here attending the session, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and any of us are very happy to, to answer those questions. So whenever you want, put them in. You don't need to wait for us to have a pause. Um, so Mitch, um, since coming to WPI, you've taken lots and lots of classes. Could you talk about some of the projects that you've done in your classes? Sure. So I've had a couple of project-based classes. Um, well, I've had more than a couple of project-based classes, but I've had a couple that are more physical and more in the mechanical realm and a couple that are more theoretical uh, projects, such as uh, the thermal design capstone that I took in D-Term was our final project was a SOLIDWORKS thermal simulation of a cooler that we had to design for a specific uh, graphics processor for a computer. So we had to make our own heat spreader, decide what method of uh, heat distribution we wanted. We ended up going with the heat pipes and heat sink combination, and then run through the simulation of all of that uh, so that we could prove that the processor could run for X number of hours, reach up to whatever uh, max temperature that it would reach with our cooler on it and prove that it was well below with a safety factor well below uh, the manufacturer's standards for how hot that processor could get. Very cool. That's a great project. Yeah. We've also had, I'm sure you're, <laughs> I'm sure you're thinking of it, uh, for stress and, and uh, specifically stress, actually, stress analysis. Uh, Professor Wooden Schwartz was my professor. So she had us do... Uh, an analysis and make our own obstacle for American Ninja Warrior. She's a big fan of the show. So we ended up making uh, a set of bars that contestants would have to jump from one to the other carrying the, the bar with them. And we had to do a full analysis of the loads and stresses that would be applied uh, at each point of that obstacle as a contestant were to swing across them if it were actually real. So that was really fun. And it was good to actually like put a real world spin on, you know, this theoretical math that we're all doing in class for hours and hours and hours. Well, thank you, Mitch. Um, one question for all of you, because uh, I imagine it's on the minds of a lot of the people who are here in uh, participants. What was it about WPI that made you decide you wanted to come to WPI? We can go in the same order. Why don't we start with Kelly? What, what about WPI? Why did you pick here? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, if I have to be brutally honest, uh, it's quite close to my house. So that, that does help. That was a factor. Uh, another factor was I had gotten a lot of exposure to WPI uh, through robotics. So I'd been coming here for competitions for four years. Um, and just, it was one of the colleges that felt the most flexible. You know, I wasn't going to college and then figuring out my major, I knew I wanted to do mechanical engineering. And this was one of the few colleges in the area where, you know, where I knew I would be able to travel. Well, COVID, but disregard that. Um, you know, I knew I would be able to travel. I knew I would be able to participate in clubs that I wanted to. Um, I do band. I knew that I would be able to participate in a robust band program. Um, a few other colleges I went to, you know, they told me, oh yeah, most people get to travel except for engineering students. You know, we have a great band program, you know, for music majors. Um, and, and this one really mm -hmm. felt like it offered me everything I wanted. All right, I can go next. <clears throat> um, pretty much I chose WPI when I was taking the tour around here. I love the atmosphere of all of the people and how friendly everyone was here. Um, I also enjoyed that it was a project-based learning in classes, so it wasn't just you sitting on, sitting at a desk being lectured all the time. You were actually making and solving real-life problems um, with other groups, and you could meet so many people through all these classes. So, and then I also um, personally, once I got here, I joined the rowing team, and I was a walk-on, so the environment here of just joining new activities and clubs is um, amazing and everyone is so welcoming. 
I think the strongest push for me for WPI was uh, like we've already talked about access. Um, I'm one of those people who has at any given time far, far too many unfinished projects just laying around, usually cluttering my desk and bookshelf and floor. Um, and so one of the things when I was going to college is um, touring around, I think I, I think I toured like 19 or 20 colleges. And one of the things that I would always ask was, you know, like, what's your machine shop access? Like, how can I get into, how can I get into the shops? How can I get my hands on the tools that I can't afford to buy on my own? How can I play with things? Um, and, and time and time again, I faced the answer of, oh, well, if you get in touch with professors, they have projects that you can get working on. Or if you get into your like junior and senior year, you can, you know, you can start a research project and work through the shops there. And what I really wanted was access to uh, things that I could use to learn for my personal projects and things that I could use to expand upon skill sets that I didn't have, but still have fun doing and not necessarily need to have a graded performance on. So that was a huge push for me. I mean, the access to Washburn and previously the Higgins machine shop, which has now been moved to Washburn, the, the manual machines there and um, I'm also involved in uh, a club starting now that's working to get access for students to the foundry that's on campus for metal casting capabilities. Um, so there's there's really just an assortment of everything, the laser cutter in Foise, the laser cutter in the new innovation studio that is, and as well as like the, the 3D printing capabilities both there and through clubs. I'm also part of uh, a student run makerspace on campus called Collab Lab which is very open-ended, very student project driven um, with 3D printing capabilities and student experience in just how to make things. So that was, that was one of my drives. That's great, thank you. Um, we have a few questions in the chat here that I think maybe are worth answering live. Uh, one of them is, uh, the question is, from what I hear about your classes that you incorporate PBL once a year, not sure all classes use PBL approach. Um, and so there are the large project experiences that students uh, can work on. There's the great problem seminar in their first year, which is an optional project, but a lot of students participate in that. Um, there's the humanities and arts capstone experience, which can be a large project or can be a series of classes that then end in a project based course. There's the junior year project, which is the interactive qualifying project. That's when where students generally go abroad. Um, but they can also work on projects uh, on campus as well. And then there's that senior project we've been talking about, the major qualifying project or MQP. So those are the large project experiences, but there's also lots of uh, projects embedded into courses. And so some of the projects that Mitch was talking about earlier, those are projects are using PBL in the classroom on a smaller scale. I, I don't have a number of course of how many courses use PBL in the classes, but maybe from the students, do you have a sense of how frequently you would feel like your courses have projects in them? Um, I would say at the beginning freshman year, when you take a lot of your like basic classes, there's not as many, but once you start becoming like a junior and senior, um, both my classes like right now are project-based. And then I also have my major qualifying project with Kelly and Mitch. So I'm right now working in three classes with three projects, so. Yeah, I would concur on that. Um, freshman year, there are some classes that are project-based freshman year. Uh, I was in a global project seminar class that was uh, reuse, recycle. And so that was, that was project-based. Uh, our final project was uh, we were working with uh, a contact in Paraguay to try and, and do something about a situation with uh, plastic litter and, and plastic degrading into the environment there. Uh, which was really fun, but really sophomore, junior year in class projects ramp up a lot. You get into the higher level engineering specific classes, you get out of, you know, physics 110 and, and chem 1010, and, and then the, the projects really start to come in. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd also say uh, it can occasionally uh, vary based on the professor. Some professors, you know, like, like doing a more uh, structured test approach, uh, and this is this is generally at the lower levels, you know, sophomore year maybe, 
Uh, some professors do like to integrate some smaller projects in there, here or there, um, even if they're small design projects that only last two weeks or so, um, but it still counts towards your final grade. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, I would also yeah. add on to that, uh, you, you know, um, I, I know that Alyssa was or is taking kinematics, but, you know, when I was teaching kinematics, we had uh, three different projects that we were doing, but the overall theme was we wanted to foil uh, golf players, but for miniature golf. So therefore, we had our four bar linkage. It's one of the things that you had to do in kinematics. First of all, kinematics, a windshield wiper goes back and forth and back and forth, but how does it do it? The motor doesn't go back and forth. The motor continually goes around and around and around to make that windshield wiper go back and forth. And that's where you get the kinematics, the linkages that do that. So therefore, the students would design whatever they wanted in order to help foil these, you know, uh, miniature golf players. Some had, you know, rake mechanisms that would come out and scrape along the, the course. Others would have a guillotine coming back and forth. Others would have a drawbridge going up and down, but they were all based on a four bar linkage. Next project, it was the same thing, but you had to use gears instead of a four bar linkage. And then the next project was you had to use cams in order to do it. But the whole idea was that you would go ahead and do this so that we would have our own, you know, uh, miniature golf type system with a whole variety of different foiling mechanisms to make it infuriating to, to be able to, you know, make a hole in one with your uh, stuff. Sarah? It makes me both want to and not want to go golfing with you. I can't <laughs> decide which is the dominating feeling right now. Um, and that's great. I looking back at our in the Q and A here. There's a question about what uh, what programs are offered for study abroad for engineering. And so that the there are several opportunities to to go abroad. Um, the the humanities and arts project that I talked about. You there's the opportunity to go abroad for a few different projects, I believe, related to the humanities and arts uh, program. Um, the major one where most people would be having their abroad experience would be in the junior year, the interactive qualifying project, where students do a preparation course before they leave to go abroad and learn some social science research methods. And then they go abroad and they work with a sponsor at the site that they're, um, that they're going to, and they really get a chance to work with the community. It's not that they're taking classes in that new location. They're working with people from that community, getting to know the place uh, at a much more intimate level. Um, during, during COVID times of travel suspended, a lot of that work has been moved to remote. Uh, this year, especially, they're trying to do a lot of work to ensure that students get to do travel, be it to going to their site fully or doing other things to, to make sure students have the chance to travel. Um, so it's definitely coming back, which is fantastic. Um, and then in the senior year, students have the chance to do their major qualifying project abroad. Most do their major qualifying project on campus. That's much more common to stay on campus, but there are a few opportunities to go abroad for your senior year project. Um, and if I could just add one, one quick thing about uh, the global opportunities at WPI, I think it's very important to know that all WPI students are offered a global stipend of up to $5,000 to take advantage of our global opportunities. That's really important to our community that students have this opportunity and that the ability to afford this experience is not hindered by finances. So um, it's basically like a cash out option. Most of the opportunities are roughly 5,000. There's a few that are a little bit more expensive like Zurich and Copenhagen, but um, it is very doable, which is why about 90% of our students will leave campus to do a project. So I did want to sneak that in because I think that's super cool. And I wish I had that opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Julie. I, I'm, I know some of the details of that, but I'm glad that you know more of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. Um, 
So something I wanted to ask the students next would be about Worcester. And I love asking students this question because I get to learn some stuff. What is your favorite thing about Worcester? Uh, we'll go in the same order just to make it easy. Kelly, what's your favorite thing about Worcester? You're from Worcester, so you probably know lots of great things. From near Worcester. Um, <laughs> I'm not exactly from Worcester. Um, I mean, it's probably gonna sound you know, cliche once you get here, because uh, you'll you'll see it right away. I really do like the amount of parks around. Um, Worcester is incredibly proud of its parks. Um, and like I said, you know, you'll see why once you get here. They're fantastic. There are so many of them. Um, honestly, even some of the, the neighborhoods not even far from campus are just a great place to you know, walk around during the day in between classes with friends, you know, it, in some of them at some points, you don't even feel like you're in a city, which, you know, for somebody that doesn't really love cities like I, like me, um, you know, it's a, it's a great place. Yeah, I would also agree with Kelly with the parks and all the greenery that we have around here. Um, also, I have a dog, so I take him walking all the time and take him to parks. We have so many different dog parks and trails around here that you can even go like hiking or with your friends that isn't too far. Um, everything is pretty much like walking distance too. So if you ever did need to go to the grocery store, we have um, a grocery store right next to WPI. We also have a lot of restaurants on a main street that we have, which they have all different varieties of foods from like seafood to hamburgers, to breakfast, to ice cream. So. There's a lot of variety just in the small radius around WPI. Yeah, I think I think my favorite part about Worcester is kind of the style it is. I mean, it's an old it's an old Massachusetts mill town. So what you get is this kind of unique blend of like urban suburbia, where it's a city of I don't know, I think like two hundred thousand people ish, and nine out of the 10 buildings unless you go like right to the downtown district are houses you know you have seven colleges and you have this like tight knit community space where like i can walk a couple of blocks that way and find the best chinese food place i know or i could go a little bit further and there's a good thai place in downtown there's a place called shawarma palace which i highly recommend if you come here the man is amazing his name's charlie it's very nice very good Mediterranean food. Um, but it's it's still not like overwhelming. I, I I mean, I have an aunt who lives in New York City and like going to visit, it's cool and it's novel and it's new, but it also becomes overwhelming for me very quickly because it's like, you can't see the sky all the time and there's always different weather than what it says on your phone and you never know. So I like that it's got like a town feel to it, even though it's a huge city in and of itself. And I also like that it's 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 in New England. So, I mean, if you're, you're probably not gonna have a car on campus freshman year, but in upperclassmen years, it's common to get a car. You're 30 minutes from the nearest uh, ski hill, which is pretty decent. It's not the best ski hill around, but it's, it's there. You're less than five hours from the best ski hill in New England. <laughs> you've got Boston an hour east, you've got Providence 40 minutes south, and if you really want to go to New York City, you're only, I think, about three and a half, four hours from there, and you can do train to Boston, train to New York. There's public transit options as well, north and south. I feel like you know the geography around here very well. I'm also not from very far from here, so. He's insulting my mountain. <laughs> Watch you sit is fun. I love Watch You Sit. Watch You Sit is also very small. <laughs> hey, I've been on the Watch You Sit Ski Patrol for more than a dozen years. It was a great mountain. To it's a great mountain. It's where I learned to snowboard. I love it. Yeah. I'm just going to say, if we're going to pick mountains in Massachusetts, Berkshire East is definitely the best mountain in, in Massachusetts. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you're going to go skiing somewhere, Berkshire East is the place to go. Well, you do that within a half hour of WPI. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that's great. I, I think we probably have time maybe for like one more question here. So I would love to end it by asking you three students, what is your favorite part about WPI itself? 
We're going the reverse order this time, Mitch. I guess I'm up then. <sighs> Unless the last ready. I think it comes back to, I really do like the campus for one. That's not my favorite thing. I do like the aesthetic of the campus. I like the old mill town kind of vibes that it has, but I think the community and the access that the community has to anything and everything, makerspace related, machine shop related, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's, I think my favorite thing. You know, when I was freshman year, we went to the activities fair, right? me and a couple of friends, and we were wandering around and that's where I got in touch with Collab Lab and it was this table just covered in various projects. They had a Tesla coil and a 3D printer that someone had built from scratch and an electric skateboard that someone was building. And the guy was working on it on the table at the activities fair because he had specced out his uh, power switch wrong and it kept burning out on him. So he had it like disassembled and he was going through and replacing it with the right spec switch while he was at the activities fair because he was going to use it to get back to his apartment afterwards. And that was just like, oh, I've, I've found my people here. Like I, I can sit down with nine out of the 10 people at this school and talk about, you know, a project that I'm working on or a project that they're working on. And it's something that I have in common with everybody here. Yeah, I also agree with Mitch and everything that he just said. Um, also, along with like clubs and activities, there are so many diverse um, activity, activities that there's stuff for everyone. And if there isn't and you don't see something that you like, you can always create your own club, which I like. Um, also, in like your classes with all of these project based, we have 3D printers in the Innovation Center. And um, you can print stuff through that, which is also amazing. And just like the community in general, um, going and sitting in one of our like study areas at the library or the campus center, you just talk to everyone. Everyone's super friendly. You make so many friends, especially I would definitely recommend joining a lot of clubs and activities because uh, that's how I made most of my friends was through that. So yeah, that's my favorite part. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, I sort of have, uh, I have to agree with most of what they just said, you know, I'm, well, I'm in way too many clubs uh, for a senior. Um, yeah, I mean, it's got to be the people, you know, I, not to say that I like, you know, I, I didn't have people in high school, um, but like I, I came here and it was just a whole new experience. Like I've got, you know, I've got like friends that I'll just go do dumb stuff with, like stay up till midnight building a really fast chair or, you know, something dumb like that. You know, I, I have, you know, I have connections that I know are going to last a long time. And, you know, there's some of them are definitely like, oh, I know you and you know them, and that's going to help me get a job down the line. But so many of them are just, you know, incredible people that I've met just with these crazy life stories. Um, and, you know, and I, I, I'm still meeting people. I'm a senior you know, we had the bit of a break with COVID, which was a bit rough in terms of social stuff, but I'm like, I'm still meeting new people. I'm still making friends with incoming, well, I guess they're already here, uh, making friends with freshmen, um, you know, forming new connections every week. It's, it's really good. Sorry, I have one other thing to add. Um, personally for me, um, also having friends from all over the country and world was another cool thing. So you got to learn a lot about other people's lifestyles and how it differs from um, me personally. Also your professors aren't scary and they are always there for you. So like, even if your class is already over, you can always email them for help even with something outside of class. So they're also um, very good. Thank you, Alyssa. I think I need to hand it back over to Julie to, to yeah. close us out. 
that was such a great way to, to end this session. I, I hope all academic sessions end on just kind of the welcoming vibe that WPI is, because it really is that way. And I know that if I ever need anything, I can reach out to any professor pretty much any time to say, please explain this to me because I don't get it, or how do I help a student? And I really appreciate that after about 20 years at WPI. So I did want to mention um, very quickly that there are lots more virtual academic information sessions going on between now and the end of October. So um, definitely check that out at our admissions website um, to see what other options you might be interested in checking out because there were some questions about robotics and aerospace and that type of thing. They have their own sessions, at least uh, two more coming up in the next month. But I want to thank you all. I want to thank all of our panelists because you guys were amazing and I really, really appreciate it. And again, this is recorded so you can go back and watch it if there's something that you or you just panelists want to see your faces again um that would be great but thank you all have a lovely evening if anybody has any questions you can always email us at admissions at wpi.edu as well so thank you again bye everybody. Right. thank you